This Zoom open house is being recorded for further viewing by you or anyone who could not join us tonight. And good evening. I'm Carol Besky, Public Involvement Manager for the Northampton Street Bridge Rehabilitation Project. And on behalf of the Delaware River Joint Toll Bridge Commission, thank you for joining us this evening for this informational open house. We would really like to be with you in person at a traditional open house, but with the pandemic, we're just happy to be able to bring you a virtual open house to provide you with the information on this important project. Now, a little bit about the virtual open house and how it's going to work. The project team is going to go through a PowerPoint presentation to tell you about the project, the design, and the schedule. During that presentation, while you're listening and watching, and if you have a question, you can just click on the Q&A feature, feature that you see on your Zoom screen. Write your name, your town, and your question. After the PowerPoint is complete, the team will be addressing those questions. If you have a question that you want to ask directly, we'll be using the raise your hand feature once we finish the Q&A. We will give detailed instructions on using that hand raise feature later. And now I'd like to to introduce Michael McCandless. Mike is project manager for this project at the Delaware River Joint Toll Bridge Commission. Mike. Thank you, Carol. And welcome to everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. Our purpose of tonight's presentation is to provide you with information regarding the upcoming maintenance rehabilitation of the Northampton Street Bridge and to answer project related questions that you may have. My name is Mike McCandless. I am the program manager for structures for the Delaware River Joint Toll Bridge Commission and I'm the project manager for this particular project. In addition, uh, additional Delaware River Joint Toll Bridge Commission representatives present on today's, uh, today's presentation include our executive director, Mr. Joseph Resta, uh, our Deputy Executive Director of Communications, Mr. Joseph Donnelly, our Chief Engineer, Mr. Roy Little, our Director of Community Affairs, Ms. Jody Inchko, and one of our Senior Project Managers, Mr. Christ Christopher Harney. Our design team is being led by Greenman Peterson Incorporated, and our design project manager is Mr. John Schrodner, accompanied today by project engineer, Jason Bez. ACT Engineering Incorporated will be facilitating the open house presentation tonight, led by Carol Besky and Eric Persina. Advantage Engineering Associates will be handling our highway lighting design. And present with us today is Brandon Portelli, Domingo Gonzalez Associates will be handling our architectural and aesthetic lighting design. And with us today is Mr. Fat Quatch with Domingo Gonzalez Associates. Eric, if we could move to the next slide. The, uh, the Northampton Street Bridge is a double cantilever truss with a 50 foot suspended span in, at the center of the bridge. Uh, the end portions of the bridge are 125 feet long with a center main span of 300 feet. It was originally constructed in 1895 and 1896. It's the only bridge of its type in the United States. The only other bridge that can be found that's similar to this structure can be found in Budapest, Hungary. We had significant repairs that were made in 1957 as a result of the 1955 flood damage. Prior rehabilitations of the structure occurred in 1990 and then again in 2001 and 2002. The 2001 rehabilitation included repair and replacement of steel members, replacement of the sidewalks, various masonry repairs, uh, repainting of the bridge, and it also included the installation of the aesthetic lighting system that is currently in need of replacement. 
Our current load posting on the structure is three tons. Our average daily traffic, um, that would daily traffic in 2019 was approximately 17,000 vehicles. That went down to approximately 15,000 vehicles daily as a result of COVID. And the numbers that we're seeing in 2021 uh, appear to be trending back toward the values of the 2019 numbers, closer to 17,000 vehicles per day. The commission owns and operates eight toll bridges and 12 toll supported bridges. A purpose and commitment of the commission is to preserve the iconic structures while providing safe river crossings. The average age of our toll supported iconic bridges is over hundred years and the Northampton Street Free Bridge is 125 years old. The, Northamp the Northampton Street Bridge is part of the fabric connecting the communities of Easton and Phillipsburg. And we all have a commitment to preserve the structure for as long as possible. And to that end, the commission dedicates significant staff to the Northampton Street Bridge to prevent damage due to oversized and overweight vehicles. Our bridge officers are posted at each end of the bridge and turn around over 5,000 vehicles annually. In addition, we program routine maintenance rehabilitation projects. The rehabilitation projects set out to address all the repairs needed with the intent we will, that we will not be required to return to the bridge for significant rehabilitation work for at least 15 years. Our last rehabilitation project took place at, at the Northampton Street Bridge in 2001 and 2002. We've therefore successfully mitigated the need for possible significant service disruption for almost 20 years. And it is now time that we must return to perform maintenance rehabilitation that will continue to preserve, preserve the structure into the future. With that said, I'd like to hand the presentation over to John Schroeder, who will walk through the upcoming maintenance rehabilitation work that is scheduled for the project. Thank you, Mike, and good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to go through some of the existing conditions on the structure. Um, as Mike noted, it's been 20 years since the last major rehabilitation. Uh, the structure remains in overall fair condition. Uh, is certainly safe for both vehicular and pedestrian traffic at the posted three ton limit, and that's not going to change after this rehabilitation. Um, the commission in inspects all of their structures every two years uh, with annual inspections of critical elements such as this structure. Uh, we also performed a special rehabilitation inspection, which is a little bit more in depth and hands on to obtain repair details and sizes for this rehabilitation project in 2020. <clears throat> so the supporting structure of the actual bridge itself, we have abutments, we have piers, uh, we have wing walls, retaining walls, uh, we have some missing pointing, uh, we have loose stones, we have deteriorated concrete that needs to be repaired uh, to, to stop further deterioration as the years go by. Next slide here, please. Uh, superstructure, which is the steel work that's supporting the, the bridge. Uh, the paint system, as Mike noted, was, was placed in 2001, 2002, so it's almost 20 years old. It's deteriorating. Once we have the paint system deteriorate, we get corrosion and section losses of the steel members, particularly at connections towards the end of the bridge, uh, areas that trap moisture. Um, so repairs to these areas are, is, is necessary to resist future deterioration. We have some misaligned components. Lower left-hand corner picture, there's some distorted eye bars. Uh, the bridge is not able to move with the thermal expansion and contraction during hot and cold weather. Um, bridges need to move freely during those temperature changes and there's certain elements that are restricting it. So we're gonna repair those. Lower right hand corner, we had some, can you go previous slide please here? Lower right hand corner, we have some flood damage from I believe 2004, 2005 flooding. Uh, not critical in nature at the time, but since we're doing a full rehabilitation, we're gonna repair that damaged stringer. 
There's some secondary elements, some bracing elements that are actually original to the 1895-1896 construction that uh, some fatigue cracks have shown up in. And once these start, um, they do, do continue. So we need to repair those. Uh, we have some failed anchor bolts at some of the bearings um, that, that will be repaired. The existing sidewalk was installed in 2001, 2002. Um, there are cracks that need to be repaired. The walkway surface is worn. We have approach, settled, approach sidewalks that have settled, the concrete sidewalks in that lower left corner uh, at several of the corners of the bridge are settled. Next slide, please here, thank you. So to repair all of this uh, and to, to get our 15 year life expectancy out of it, we're gonna clean and paint the entire superstructure as noted, it's been 20 years since it was last painted, and that's approximately the expected life expectancy of a paint system. We're gonna fix the joint mortar and on the abutments, piers, and walls, reset some of those missing stones, reconstruct some of the end pylons and walls. As you saw in previous pictures, we have corrosion, so we need to repair various structural steel elements. We're gonna replace some of those secondary members. We are gonna replace the entire sidewalk decking on both sides of the structure. Those settled approach sidewalks will be replaced. In addition to all this work, Mike had noted that the electrical lighting system was installed in 2001, 2002. That will also be replaced, both the highway and sidewalk lighting and the architectural lighting, uh, which includes facilities at each of the officer's shelters, uh, including a generator, backup generator. So for the sidewalk decking, we're proposing a, a fiber reinforced polymer system. It's a closed cell sidewalk system uh, that has improved connections. As I noted, the bridge needs to move in, in thermal situations for hot, cold. So proper connections will improve the life expectancy of, the, of any system really. Uh, and this system will have an enhanced skid resistance on the top surface. So for the highway and sidewalk lighting, the current existing lighting is shown in the upper two pictures. They're currently metal halide lights. They're 20 years old, nearing the end of their rated service life. We're gonna be replacing them with state-of-the-art LED lights um, with similar aesthetics to the existing, similar shape of the globes and, and brackets and poles. Um, two examples in the lower right-hand corner of just the top luminaire. As we all know, LEDs are much more energy efficient tell than you're there. I'll tell you when I'm calling that, yes. you need to previous lights. Um, LEDs also have an extended rated service life. Uh, as noted, similar mounting brackets. Uh, we want to match the historic aesthetic of both the existing bridge and the neighboring communities of Easton and Phillipsburg. So for the architectural lighting, as Mike noted, it's currently an operative and we're also gonna be replacing that with a state-of-the-art LED system. It will include an advanced lighting control that will allow dimming of the lights, uh, which will also help improve the uh, rated life of the equipment when we dim them at night. Uh, also will include lighting articulation. The base colors would be a warm white default as you see in that lower rendering on the right uh, to highlight the existing bridge elements, but it'll also allow programmable color displays for special events and occasions. So the architectural lighting set out to highlight the bridge's unique structural design since it is the only structure of its type in the United States. So we have a few renderings of potential lighting schemes coming up. Um, there will be the availability for organizations to request temporary color displays from the commission. Um, the, be an online page for requests on the commission's website dedicated to this structure in particular. For an example of this, you can take a look at the Lower Trenton Toll Supported Bridge, the Trenton, Trenton Makes, the World Takes. Um, the link is right there, very similar setup to requesting lighting displays. Um, they have an annual lighting display schedule online. Uh, something similar will be created for the Northampton Street Bridge. Here's a, a rendering of the, the white lighting at 100%, highlighting all the unique aspects of the structure. 
As noted, we can dim the lighting to 50% overnight to conserve energy and to extend the service life of the fixtures themselves. Um, special occasions and holidays, uh, we can, we, possibilities are unlimited. Uh, breast cancer awareness can be one. Independence Day, Labor Day, um, any holiday you can think of. So just some examples, renderings, of course. Current project schedule, we're June 2021 here at our open virtual open house. Our design is complete, wrapping up. Uh, the commission anticipates advertising for construction next month, July 2021. Award for construction is anticipated in October of this year, 2021, with construction beginning late fall, after October, obviously, and then wrapping up in late spring of 2023. So the estimated construction cost is somewhere between 10 and $15 million for the project. So once contract, once the contract starts uh, in, in late fall of this year, there will be no long-term lane restrictions until stage one. As you can see, long-term lane restrictions will be permitted beginning March 15th of 2022. So prior to that time, the contractor will be working on offsite stuff, mobilization, uh, below bridge uh, items with only short-term lane closings for access. The long-term lane closings will start in stage one, as noted, March 15th of 2022, where we will reduce the three lanes to two lanes and shift traffic to the south. Uh, we'll maintain the south sidewalk while we work on the north side of the bridge. At all times, one sidewalk will remain open in any stage. So in, we need to close that lane adjacent to one side of the bridge as shown. This is an example of, of the previous rehabilitation project. This is a painting containment where work is being done inside that for the truss elements. And, and this further explains why that lane adjacent to the work area requires closing reduction to one lane in each direction. Stage two is primarily a mirror image of stage one, where we finished our work on the north side. Now we're going to go to work on the south side. So we shift traffic to the north side, one lane in each direction, open the north sidewalk. And again, one sidewalk will always remain open. Stage three is really a shorter duration stage to gain access to the above deck pier portions and below deck work immediately in the center of the bridge where we push traffic out one lane on the north side, one lane on the south side, and both sidewalks would be open at this time. And again, those restrictions can only extend from March 15th to November 18th of 2022. And we expect those to spill over to 2023 a little bit before we complete the project. And with that, I'm going to turn it back to Carol for a little explanation of our Q&A session. Well, thank you, John. Um, we're now going to move into the Q&A part of the open house. Remember, you can write your questions into the Q&A by clicking on that key Q&A icon you see on your screen. After you've completed all of the, after we've completed all of these written questions, if any come in, then we're going to move into the hand raising icon. And again, if you want to speak directly, uh, you will click on the hand raised icon. You will be unmuted and you will state your name and your town, no address, no street address is needed, and then ask your question. And if someone has asked a previous question that is much like yours, we would really ask you to please um, unclick your raised hand so that we don't repeat questions on an ongoing basis. And uh, now I'd like to turn the open house over to Mr. Joe Resta, who is the executive director for the Delaware River Joint Toll Bridge Commission. So Joe, thank you, it's yours. Thank you uh, again, I'm Joe Resta, executive director, Delaware River Joint Toll Bridge Commission. Uh, we do have uh, a Q and A question. Uh, the first of which is from Ryan Carr. The community of Easton wishes for dedicated bike lanes to be considered on the free bridge. Is any part of the plan rehabilitation, including this element? Thank you. Uh, generally, uh, the operation of the bridge as it is today will continue on after the rehabilitation. Um, 
it, it would be, uh, we can talk specifically about operations of uh, bicycle lanes and bicycles on the footways. Uh, Mr. Little, Mr. McCandless, um, could you address those situations? Yeah, thank you, Joe. Yep. Um, yeah, let me, let me take, take that, Mike. Um, still. Thank you, Mr. Rusta. Uh, what we look at uh, are the uh, four potential uh, multiple use, mixed mode use on, on a sidewalk, uh, on a bridge, uh, are the federal highway uh, standards uh, for design. Uh, for that type of mixed use. Um, what those standards require is a minimum width of uh, 10 feet uh, on the sidewalk, which uh, this bridge does not have at, at about eight foot six. Uh, and also with a railing that does not meet the minimum required height uh, for bicycle use. Uh, those two elements together uh, really restrict the mixed use uh, with bicycles riding across the bridge. Of course, we'll continue to allow uh, the bicycles to be walked across the bridge. Okay, thank you, Mr. Little. Uh, we have answered that. There are actually no more open questions. Um, okay, uh, we just received another one. Sarah from Forks, I noticed the project limits, however, Will there be officers directing traffic or simply the traffic lights? There is horrible traffic from the Phillipsburg side turning right onto the bridge because those in the opposite traffic do not understand that they do not have the right of way. So uh, obviously we're going to be down to a single lane of traffic in the westbound direction and uh, left turns uh, onto Lower Helms Drive uh, would be difficult in those times, uh, especially during the peak period. Um, we are uh, obviously expecting that the rehabilitation will not be without uh, some uh, travel delays. So we would ask folks to plan accordingly uh, for that should they uh, be kind of routine commuters uh, between the two states on the North Hampton Street River, the uh, North Hampton Street Tulsa Bridge. Bridge. Um, uh, John, is there any specifics from the project perspective regarding the use of the lights? No, there's nothing specific in the project uh, to, to address um, that additional traffic. Okay. Um, the next question is from a Mr. Bill Strickland. Is there any thought of allowing bicycles on one side and pedestrians on the opposite side? I believe our chief engineer, Mr. Little, uh, answered previously that the widths required for mixed use uh, on either side are still too narrow uh, for safe mixed use operations. So we are still requiring bikes to be walked across the bridge. The next question is from Mike Angelo. Since the increase of cash toll, it takes about 10 minutes to navigate North Main Street in Phillipsburg during drive time. Any estimates for time during lane restrictions? Uh, obviously, Mr. Angelo, that, that's going to depend on the day and the respective peak period. Uh, we do ask that folks uh, plan their travel accordingly, especially during the peak periods uh, to help themselves navigate, uh, especially in the westbound direction. Uh, there are no current estimates for drive time um, as uh, you know, that traffic has not been established yet. The next question is uh, from Mr. James Jorinko, Washington, New Jersey. With the increase in the toll bridge on Route 22, traffic has increased on the free bridge. During the time of construction, there is a plan to reduce traffic, such as temporarily lowering the cost on the toll bridge. Uh, there are no plans to temporarily lower the cost on the toll bridge. Uh, we do ask folks to plan their travel accordingly when using the Northampton Street toll supported bridge. Uh, Mr. Strickland re asked his question. His question regarding bicycle use was about single use on each side. 
Uh, so, Mr. Little, uh, can can you talk to that? A single, yeah, I would assume Mr. Strickland is talking about a single bike use on one side of the bridge and uh, restricting all pedestrians to uh, one side and, and all bicyclists to the other side. Right. Um, Mr. Resta, we, we took a look at uh, separating uh, the use, uh, you know, by side of the bridge, uh, you know, bicycles on one sidewalk and uh, pedestrians on the other sidewalk. Uh, the issue there is uh, the, uh, the number of uh, pedestrians greatly outnumbers the number of uh, bicyclists. Uh, so splitting uh, by sidewalk uh, would put uh, too many pedestrians on one side with, uh, you know, uh, a much uh, fewer number of, uh, much smaller number of uh, bicyclists on the other side. Uh, and then uh, at the ends of the bridge, uh, there would be uh, forced crossings uh, back and forth to the uh, opposite sidewalks. Uh, just to get to uh, the uh, location folks uh, are headed. So uh, the decision was that um, uh, there, would, there would not be uh, uh, enough benefit and uh, really too many deterrents to splitting the uh, use to uh, by side of the bridge. Um, the railing height also, uh, Mr. Riddle, is still a consideration? Uh, the railing height also, if we allowed... Um, uh, bicycles on on either side, uh, either sidewalk, uh, the uh, railing height would have to be increased uh, to allow for um, the bicycle use. And in addition, um, what uh, I didn't mention before is that uh, uh, with the eight foot six width and the proximity of the heavy steel beams, uh, to people potentially riding uh, bicycles across the bridge at, uh, you know, some speed um, is considered to be uh, unsafe between uh, the uh, low railing height and, uh, and the, uh, uh, the proximity of the steel beams. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is from Patty M. During what hours of the day will this rehabilitation take place? Any consideration to have work done off hours? Uh, the project is scheduled for routine uh, Monday to Friday operation. There is, there's essentially two shifts available for the contractor. That would be from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. if needed. And uh, there could be occasions um, depending on the schedule, depending on what happens with the weather during a respective week that weekends could be worked. They're not planning any overnight activities. The next comment is from Sarah Reyes. The lights are a very modern touch on a historic structure, very lively. Melvin, thank you for that comment. Uh, Mr. Bill Strickland has a question. Uh, the next question is, what are the numbers of pedestrians and cyclists crossing daily? Uh, Mr. Strickland, that is not data that we actually collect. There's no real effective way to collect that information. Um, so that's not uh, data that the, the commission currently has. Mr. Resta, if I could just add to that a little bit, um, those numbers vary uh, significantly uh, depending on uh, what day we're talking about, and in fact, what time of day we're talking about, especially when there are uh, special events, of which there are many in, in the uh, local area, uh, we can have uh, uh, very large numbers of uh, pedestrians uh, crossing the bridge. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, another question from Mr. Strickland, could you provide statistics or data for the lack of safety for two cyclists riding abreast near a low railing, is that based on data? Um, I believe, Mr. Strickland, that is based on the Federal Highway uh, regulations that Mr. Little cited previously. Mr. Little, could you add to that? I would just say that uh, in order to establish those design standards uh, that the uh, Federal Highway Administration 
um, you know, goes through the, the studies, which um, um, I, I'm near certain included uh, a, a lot of data, uh, whether or not it included uh, the safety of side-by-side -side bicycles, I am not uh, certain, but a lot of that data is used to develop those standards and uh, is, is worked into the mix. Okay, another question from Mr. Strickland. I asked for data on pedestrians and cyclists because that was cited as reason for not dedicating a lane to bicycles. Could you further explain your reasoning given that there is no data? Uh, the safety concerns that were previously discussed are the, are, the, are the reasoning for that. We also previously discussed that we were not changing uh, the operation, the, the, the pedestrian, uh, cyclist, and traffic operation on this uh, bridge. The, the bridge is a 125-year-old structure that we are uh, doing the rehabilitation on, and it, there's really little opportunity to add to widths to accommodate Mr. Strickland's question. Was that a question of me, Joe? No, it was not. Okay. Are there any other people that would like, okay, here, I, we'll keep going. This is from uh, GDP Mass. Was any consideration given to widening the, the sidewalk to accommodate both cyclists and pedestrians around the reference 10 foot standards? Okay, um, so I believe we have answered that question. Um, we do have a 125 year old structure uh, that we are rehabilitating. We are not uh, dismantling the bridge and rebuilding it. Um, and, and, and given that, there was really no opportunity to widen the sidewalk to accommodate both cyclists and pedestrians. Yeah, there, there really is not since uh, there is not an opportunity to uh, widen those sidewalks since uh, in 1895, uh, the loads that were used uh, to design the bridge were much lighter than the required loads today. And we're talking, uh, for the most part, the traffic loads. Uh, so that uh, with a, and that is uh, the largest reason why we're restricted to a, a three ton load limit on the bridge. Uh, adding any additional uh, dead load, heavier uh, beam members and such for uh, wider sidewalks, uh, plus the additional uh, pedestrian uh, load that uh, would be uh, put onto those wider areas uh, is something that this bridge could not handle and, uh, and even maintain its already low three ton load limit. Thank you, Mr. Lynn. Uh, next, next question is from Sarah Reyes, can you walk a bike? Uh, yes, you can walk a bike across uh, the footway portions of the bridge. Another question from uh, Mr. Mass, the LED lighting that was installed under the 22 overpass at third was consistently and conspicuously malfunctioning broken for an 18 month estimate period or so. Do you feel you figured that out and will devote maintenance support so the bridge is consistently lit and not flickering or unlit? Uh, the answer to that question is yes, we feel that we have figured that out. Anyone else that would like to um, type in a question to the Q&A at this point? Because if not, then we're going to see, oh, here we go, not one more. Will there be a fee to set up lights? Um, that's uh, from Sarah Reyes. Uh, no, there will not be a fee. It does require a use of facilities form and a, a form for that. Um, there is really a calendar of events already established on the Lower Trenton Bridge, our, our Trenton Makes Bridge. Um, for folks to get familiar with the operation of requesting lighting, uh, it would be uh, suitable to review um, the, that calendar and, and, and how that process works. Uh, obviously, when, when the rehabilitation is completed and the new lighting system is functional, we would uh, put on our website 
the uh, protocols and process for the North Hampton Street Tall Support Bridge. Okay, uh, one, another one, Mr. Resta. What can be done to improve the site? This is from Ryan Carr. What can be done to improve the cycling aspects of our community with regard to crossing? The decking is very slippery and it's safer for cyclists to ride. Uh, we have answered this question uh, a number of times this evening. Um, the decking, the, the footways are going to be replaced uh, with a new system. So we've we've uh, taken care of the, uh, we'll be taking care of the uh, slipperiness. Um, although Mr. Carr feels it's safer for cyclists to ride, it is not in fact safe to have mixed use with pedestrians and cyclists on that narrow of a footway. So the current operation of the bridge with bicycles being walked across the footways will continue. Okay, I think we're going to move on to the raise hand. If there's anyone that would like to ask a question directly, um, we encourage you to do so. You will click on that icon that you see on your screen, and um, we, you will be at, you'll be unmuted and asked to state your name and your town, and then you can ask your question. And as some more questions come into the Q and A, as we if there's we'll go back and forth between this so that we can make sure that we get to anyone's question or or, or uh, answer that they may want to be discussing. Um, but we do have one more in the um, Q and A at this point. Carol, that is, that is a comment from okay, Mr. Yeah. Angelo. Uh, he enjoys his time walking his bike across the bridge and viewing the river. Okay, is there anyone who would like to speak directly? If not, um, I want to, I'm going to say thank you, Mr. Resta, for all those good answers. Um, in closing, um, thank you all for joining us this evening. If you have any questions after tonight, you can access this presentation or leave an email question by logging into the DRJTBC website and email communityaffairs.com. You can see all this on your screen. Um, you can, will be able to post questions and receive answers concerning this project until right through June 25th. If you have neighbors that did miss this tonight and they want to be able to um, see it just remember that you can you can it's going to be available for everybody to see i see that we now have two hands raised and another question so and this is great because this is what an open house is about it's not like off and on so we'll go back to the um, eric mr strickland i believe has his hand raised Can you unmute Mr. Strickland? Yes, I'm unmuted. Hi guys, uh, th thanks for um, taking our questions. I really appreciate it. I think you can tell that I'm a cycling advocate for um, transportation uh, as well as recreation. And I, I, I appreciate your time and I appreciate your willingness to listen to us. Um, you, I just wonder if there's anything we can do to help uh, work toward riding access on the bridge. I think when you cited the number of pedestrians who walk is greater than the number, uh, the number of pedestrians who use it is greater than the number of cyclists. Uh, it, it's one of those, you know, this is like a common fallacy in um, transportation advocacy is that you determine the use by who it's not built for. So for instance, if we required cars to stop and people to walk beside their cars, very few people would use the bridge, but that doesn't mean if you allowed people to drive across the bridge, they wouldn't use it. So the reason this is so important to me is I really believe this is the key connector between East and Phillipsburg, which are um, two communities that could grow in vibrancy and, and could be more robust if we somehow uh, allowed cyclists to ride across that. So I, I guess my question is uh, every, sort of every time I ask for some data or some backing, it sounds like it's just an opinion. And I'm wondering if this is, if. It's just a done deal, or if, if you would be open to me coming back to you 
with some statistics and data and other places that have um, given variances to the widths for mixed use. I wonder if this is something we could work toward or if this is um, just a decision that you've made, which is what it sounds like from your comments. I, I would agree with you uh, that the decision for uh, not allowing bicyclists to ride across uh, the bridge has been made. It's, it's made based on safe operation uh, at the location. But I can, I can give you, I can give you statistics it's, about it's safety and um, contradiction and the actual width of the uh, footways. But what if, I can, what if I can give you statistics and data mm -hmm. that contradict what you're telling me? Would you be willing to reconsider? Uh, we actually, uh, you know, we are uh, obviously in the bridge business. We're building another bridge south of North Hampton Street, Tulsa Porter Bridge. Um, that bridge, uh, based on the cyclist advocacy, did include uh, a mixed use lane uh, for that activity. Um, it was a new build, so it had the opportunity for that. Uh, this is uh, an iconic 125 year old structure and unfortunately does not have the opportunity for that. I, I appreciate that. My question, my direct question is, if I can show you that there are variances on the width, would you be, would you be willing to uh, change your opinion about the mixed use, allowing mixed use? Um, I would because argue- there are, there are, there are other projects around the country that have allowed that variance. I think, um, I think obviously you're, you're well within uh, your advocacy to send uh, whatever data that you would that you would like to send in, we'll certainly review it. Um, but we're not necessarily uh, going to be able to grant your request. Sure, I understand. I do appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. I know I'm. I know I'm. You know, being a little bit of a uh, pest to you tonight. I, so I do appreciate your um, your politeness to, toward me. Okay, Eric, um, uh, raise hands. I don't see all three. We have Mayor Panto. Okay, Mayor Panto, uh, you're actually unmuted. Okay, I'm unmuted. I'm here. I would just um, like to thank the Delaware River Joint Toll Bridge Commission for this information. Uh, I enjoyed getting it last week with Mayor Tersigny. Uh, I think there's some issues, obviously, with cyclists that we could address maybe in the future as cycling becomes more and more prevalent in our two communities. But I did want everybody to know that one of the things that the mayor of um, Phillipsburg and I have been trying for ever since Steve Ellis was mayor is that Highline project, which would connect um, using the old railroad bridge that goes across the bridge already. Uh, and maybe we can get the bridge commission involved in that, like you were involved with our waterfront development. So I'm very pleased with, with what you're going to be doing. I am especially pleased with the light, the architectural lighting and the fact that you're using LED lighting. Uh, and I just want to thank you. And I know it's going to be, um, construction tends to be a real inconvenience for people. And I just hope people have patience. Thank you for your comments, Mayor. Any more people want the opportunity? Two participants raised hands. We have GD, G, G, e, D, me, D, P, Mast for their hand raised. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Yeah, that's, sorry, GDP is not my first name, it's Jared. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not on my computer, I'm on my phone, so I couldn't figure out how to, how to change that. Um, just again, appreciate your time and opening up this to questions and feedback. Um, Commissioner, Executive Director Resta mentioned bicycle advocacy as a, a vehicle for moving a conversation forward around um, accommodating cyclists. And, you know, I think we have a little bit of that here, um, you know, between Bill from Bicycling Magazine and Ryan and myself and uh, some other folks in the audience, I think. Um, and just wondering what level of advocacy is is appropriate or warranted to move the kind of conversation forward that that Bill was asking for. You know, I think there there could be advocacy organized around this. And since you brought that up, you know, it, it's a curiosity at least. And I'm I'm curious what what that might mean and how it 
could potentially uh, move this conversation forward and take a closer look at variances and accommodations. Um, I do think that it's very important to connect Easton and Phillipsburg, especially with some of the proposed development that we're seeing from Phillipsburg and the continued development of Easton that Mayor Panto has overseen in his tenure um, that I think is going to continue to, to build upon itself. And uh, I think it might be a bit short-sighted to do a project in 2021 that isn't uh, fully taking into account the growth on, on both sides of the river and the accommodation of active transportation in addition to automobile transportation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mass. I, I, uh, I want to be clear that the communities of Easton and Phillipsburg are connected. Um, the, uh, the bridge itself is, as we've said, a 125 year old structure. Um, there is little opportunity to demolish that bridge and rebuild it. Um, that would obviously uh, have more opportunities for some of the activities that you're describing. Uh, the advocacies that I was describing previously were for another project where we did have that opportunity, where, where we are uh, constructing a new facility. Um, and we uh, did talk to the cyclist advocacy groups and in that particular crossing, it was accommodated. Um, we do have other toll supported bridges that operate the same way as the Northampton Street toll supported bridge. It is not um, an anomaly in the commission. Uh, the anomaly is actually uh, uh, when the Scudder Falls uh, pedestrian and uh, the bicyclist pathway opens that that will be mixed use. That's really the anomaly for, for the Delaware River Joint Toll Bridge Commission. Um, we're happy to uh, look at the data that is sent in, uh, but it is, at, you know, at this time, it is unlikely that we would change the operation of the bridge. So I guess my question wasn't about putting a new bridge in. Um, and a, a point would be that anomalies are anomalies until they're not, and new standards are created. And just to follow up on Bill Strickland's question, you know, what is, could there be any consideration for variance where eight and a half feet um, with kind of respites amidst the structural elements of the bridge might be satisfactory for um, shared use? And so not asking for, you know, a new bridge. I, I think this bridge is a, a spectacular architectural feature of the downtown. I know that it connects Easton and Phillipsburg. It, prioritizes automobiles and pedestrians at that point, at this point. And so the real question is whether any additional consideration could be made for um, the mixed use question, since we're only a foot and a half off and, um, you know, we're not going to be able to rebuild it. So it really is a question of whether the eight and a half feet could be reconsidered or not around different standards in different places. And, um, you know, whether that variance is palatable or not from a safety perspective. Well, not seeing anything uh, that Mr. Strick Mr. Strickland uh, intends to send in, um, you know, we certainly cannot evaluate that situation as we sit here tonight. Um, we have committed to take a look at that, um, but it is uh, it is a, a high bar for us to uh, kind of forego the safety of uh, those that are on the bridge. Well, consideration, I think, is all we can ask for, and appreciate that. And I'll uh, put my hand down now. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else that wants to raise their hand and be heard tonight? And if not, again, I'm just going to say if other questions come up, remember you can email them to communityaffairs at drjtbc.org and you get your answers and hopefully your questions will be in by June 25th. And the, this recording is gonna be available by tomorrow morning. So you can, as I said before, tell friends and neighbors who would like to know more about the project that certainly it's gonna be available to them. So I'm gonna say thank you to everybody that joined us tonight, our first virtual open house. And um, we really appreciate your attendance and your interest and your participation. So thank you and good night. Thank you folks, good evening.